What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? It's been a while since I did a questions from the toolbox episode, so that's what we're going to be tackling today. And today in specific, we're going to be talking about voltage amperage curves and why this matters, why it affects welding, and everything to do with that. So what I got here is a little handy chart, and we're going to talk about this and how it relates to a welder you have. So whether you realize it or not, all welders operate with both voltage and amperage controls. Whether it's TIG, multi-process MIG TIG stick, straight MIG, or just straight TIG, voltage and amperage control is all part of what makes a welder capable of welding. In the case of MIG, which those two machines are MIG capable, MIG operates under fixed voltage, so you adjust the voltage and you do not adjust the amperage. The amperage is whatever it takes for the wire to stop shorting out to the plate in the short circuit process. Well, with TIG and stick, that operates under constant current, so your amperage is fixed, but the voltage is varying. You do not run fixed voltage, and your voltage is whatever it takes to maintain an arc. So with TIG and stick, if you have a longer arc gap, you need more voltage. If you have a tighter arc gap, you need less voltage. So a little bit different in principle how they operate, but they all need both voltage and amperage to run. And that is where voltage amperage curves come in. So we've established that welding requires voltage and amperage control, and the ratio of that is all dependent on the process. Now, obviously not all welding requires that because oxyacetylene and laser don't require that. So this is mainly electrical arc processes. And what I have depicted here is voltage amperage curves. There's two curves of a dial arc 250 stick welder that I have. And we have curve one and curve two. The reason there's two curves on this machine is because it has a high and low gear, or basically two separate transformers. Your machine, especially if it's an inverter, would probably just have a singular curve that would look more like curve two. So let's start talking about what we got here. We have voltage, output voltage on the left, zero to 80 volts. Then we have 10 amps up to 250 amps on the amperage range. Now we're talking about stick here. So stick operates on constant current, which is known as CC, variable voltage. So the voltage is whatever it takes to maintain an arc and the amperage is fixed at whatever you set it at. So let's use an example and say, we want 100 amps, which is right here, and we're gonna weld at that. So when you have no arc struck and you're ready to strike an arc, your voltage is 80 volts at that point. The moment you strike an arc, it's going to drop the voltage output to wherever the curve meets the amperage. So that would be somewhere around right here because it aligns over here with the voltage. So 80 volts, you strike an arc, and now at 100 amps, it will output at most 40 volts. Now, if you're holding a tight arc with like a 7018, you're not operating at 40 volts. You're down in a 22 volt category, okay, at 100 amps. If you lift the rod off the plate, you may hit 40 volts. A 40 volt uh, arc gap on a 7018 would have to be probably three eighths of an inch or more. So you're not welding, you're just spraying globs of metal at that point. Where this becomes critical is if your welder, uh, if you're trying to weld with 6010 rods, which operate at 30 volts, 30 to 34 volts, what will happen is if your welder's curve of output voltage versus amperage cannot produce enough voltage, what will end up happening is you'll strike the arc weld a little bit and then it'll cut out. And the reason it's cutting out is because the welder can't maintain an arc over, say, 32 volts, say down here. So that's why most inverters cannot weld with 6010 with stick welders because they simply can't produce enough voltage because their curve due to their transformers is not capable of doing that. And I'll give a little bit more information on that a little bit further in the video. So the orange curve is for lower amp rods and it's a narrower window. The main benefit of this is on the dial, you have more control. A quarter inch movement of the dial is like two amps versus like 10. 
So having a finer control in the lower range gives you more control over, say, lower amp TIG if you want to TIG with it, or just better precise control with stick. When you're running 200 amp rods, you don't need 2 amp control, therefore you go to coarse control more or less where you're jumping 10 or 15 amps at a crack and it really doesn't matter as much, if that makes sense. So your curve, which I already wiped that off due to how much I'm sweating, your curve is more like this. It's going to be pretty wide, but it may start lower like at 40 volts. And when it starts that low and then comes down, say you're... 180 or 200 amp machine, you can see where all of a sudden you're over here, you want to run a rod at 120 amps and your output voltage is only say 30 volts. 30 volts is fine for MIG, it's fine for stick, but guess what? Uh, for 6010 you're going to struggle to run that. And also, why most MIG welders can't output, say, 25 volts, a lot of the home hobby ones are only 21 volts, is because their volt amp curve is so bad that what will end up happening at 160, 180 amps, you can't get more than 17 volts out of it. So that's why you can't get up to like 25, 26 and do spray with a lot of those machines is because of a poor voltage amperage curve. Now, I think you have this at least a little bit more understood, and it's getting a little messy here. So let's look at an actual volt amp curve from Miller Electric and decipher what it says. So this is a chart from my actual machine, and you can see the two curves, thus two transformers. And the curves are nice and sloped, and that's typical of a purely transformer power source. When you get into inverters that are controlling that transformer by feeding it something other than the frequency from the wall, you can do all sorts of stuff such as regulating max voltage. This is a typical inverter voltage amperage curve and it's not really much of a curve as you can tell and that's because there's manipulation going on on a transformer both uh, before the transformer and after essentially to regulate voltage. And that's why it's able to keep a stable voltage of about 60, 70 volts for a while before it eventually slopes off. The reason it slopes off is for the same reason that a typical transformer machine does, is that you have a ratio of your windings and you can't exceed more wattage out of it than is input. Therefore, you have to drop voltage to increase amperage. Now this curve shows over 60 volts till well over 100 amps. This would have no issue running 6010 rods or if the power source was a MIG welder, it could easily run 30 volts uh, for spray. No issue there. Now when you get higher up in the amperage, you can see at 200 amps, now you're talking maybe only 30 some volts, 32 volts. So the higher the output, the curve in this case, if this was a 250 amp machine, and what's depicted is a 200 amp machine, you would run into issues where at like 250, you wouldn't have enough voltage to spray, but at 200 you could. So volt amp curves really matter because it has to be matched to what your intended purpose is. And bigger welders, like your three, 400 amp machines, can do a lot more on the high end simply because their curves are better. Keep in mind the bigger welders require 70, 80, 100 amps on 240 volts or 20, 30, 40, 50 amps on three phase. So it's not that they're generating power somehow. The initial source that's feeding them is far more powerful. Therefore, they can maintain a lot higher voltage for longer. When the power doesn't exist at the tap on the wall outlet, you're very limited and that's why 240 volts isn't commonly used in industrial welders. It's simply not enough voltage and not enough amperage to really get what you need for performance when you start talking 250 to 300 amp output or more. So here we have a 150 amp stick and TIG welder and you can see the curve is pretty abysmal. So below 50 amps, it can maintain almost 40 volts. But when you get to that 100 amp range, it's dipped down to like 30 volts or so. This is a prime example of a power source that would not be able to run 6010 because it cannot produce enough voltage to keep an arc lit. This would run 7018, 6013 just fine, no issues. This power source would also wire weld okay 
uh, the below 20 volts is a little low, but you know around 100 amps it would be capable of MIG welding. So this would be typical of a cheaper 120 volt welder that you'd buy off of Amazon and is also why the performance with stick is oftentimes so poor. With TIG it doesn't matter because TIG only operates at 15, 14 volts or so. So this would have no problem being an excellent TIG welder power source, but for stick not so much. I thought I would throw a curveball at you guys and show you this. This is a Hobart 210 MVP. It's a kind of older school transformer based MIG welder and it actually has seven curves and that reflects the seven different set points on the dial for voltage. What's going on here is it just has multiple taps on the transformer and each tap has a different voltage amperage curve. And take a look at this and you're going to notice something. Obviously as the amperage goes up in each power range the voltage drops. So that's because again it's a transformer based machine and you can't exceed output wattage over what the input is. But when you look here at say 100 amps you could produce about 28 volts or so on number 7 curve. So you could spray at 100 amps. The problem is 100 amps isn't enough. But then when you look at say 210 amps now that's enough amperage to spray arc with your wire process, but the voltage that I can only output is somewhere around 22 and a half. So this simply can't spray because it can't produce enough voltage at 200 or higher elevated amperage. In order for a machine like this to be made to where it could spray, it would basically need a lot more power input. This is, I think, a 30 amp plug and it's rated for 30 amps. It likely pulls more than that from the wall, but this would need a 50 amp input to even come close to enough wattage overall to be trying to spray at 200 amps. One thing you guys got to remember is that this is an older style purely transformer welding machine that does not have power factor correction. This machine is probably 50 to 65 percent efficient right off the bat and then it also outputs a lot of reactive power and long story short this needs a 30 plus amp breaker just to hit 200 amps versus a more modern machine that's simply more efficient can get by with far less input power. I guess another way to look at it would be is it'd be pretty hard to sell this machine if it needed a 75 amp direct wire hookup just to weld and do spray at 200 amps. So a lot of what you're seeing here has to do with the older design simply not being efficient and it's very common for more modern welders to easily be able to spray at 200 amps because they're far more efficient and they consume a lot less power. So more of the input wattage or power goes into output availability. All right, let's move on. So I think you got the whole flow chart of volt amp curves down. Now let's talk about why they exist and what to do about unfavorable voltage amp curves. So what I got here in front of us is a chart that talks about transformer winding ratios. And I'm not going to go super in depth in this. So if you don't understand something, feel free to comment or wait until I get a video out on this in more depth in like five years. So anyways, this is a transformer. It's a poorly drawn one, but we have a primary winding and a secondary winding. Your input voltage, we'll talk 120 volt, 20 amp circuit is hooked to this coil of wire and your secondary voltage or your secondary, the output side is hooked to this and then you can get varying voltages and amperages out of that transformer based on your winding ratio. So how many turns of wire on this side versus the primary. Now all welders, whether or not they're inverters or transformers, virtually all of them have a transformer of some sort. And that's because they need to take useless 120 volt, 20 amp AC power and convert it to higher amperage, lower voltage that's usable for welding. So in the case of this 120 volt, 20 amp circuit, so your standard wall outlet is 2400 watts. Now realistically, you can overload that significantly and all welders generally do on 120 volt and they get away with it. But for the sake of the comparison, 
2400 watts that's it that's the theoretical maximum we can get out of that you could get 60 volt output at 40 amps now that voltage is usable for welding but the amperage really isn't 40 amps isn't much i mean unless you're welding with 1 16th stick rods or tig welding i don't know sheet metal this is pretty much useless so we can adjust the winding ratio to drop the voltage and go to 30 volts out in 80 amps. That's far more useful for welding. And this right here, you could actually do something with. And then again, you could screw with the winding ratio even further and get 160 amps of output, but it would only be at 15 volts, which is virtually useless. You might be able to TIG weld with that with a very short arc, so very useless. And this is the crux of the problem, especially on 120 volts. 240 is a little bit better, but 120 volts is very limiting because we don't have much current to play with. Therefore, our voltage uh, that we can ultimately get on the volt amp curve is pretty limited. Now, just so you know, every time you half the voltage, you double the amperage, okay? So you can take that 120, cut it in half, and double amperage, but your voltage is cut in half. And that's why most welders, like your home hobby MIG welders, they can't spray arc because they can't hit 25 volts. And stick welders can't run 6010, a lot of them, because they can't hit 30 plus volts. Their winding ratio is probably something like this. Well, if the max voltage it can output is 30 volts at 80 amps, well, that's kind of useless for stick welding, isn't it, with 6010 when you need 34 volts. And if you didn't notice, all of these numbers equal 2,400 watts. You cannot get more wattage out of a welder than you have for input power. I've gotten in arguments online on the Facebook groups over that because a lot of guys don't understand that and they think somehow that they're getting more power out of a welder than what's going into it. And that's simply not possible. Now, in the real world, this is a perfect example. This is 100% efficiency. No transformer is 100% efficient. So the actual output is going to be less than 2,400 watts out of the transformer. And these numbers are actually higher than what it would actually be due to losses in heat and resistance, etc. So I know this is a brief overview and it probably confused you a little bit more. But the winding ratio of the transformer is the reason that we have voltage amperage curves. And it's also the reason why a lot of welders simply do not perform properly. Now, to get around this problem, it is possible to have higher voltage at lower outputs. However, you can never have a perpetual motion machine. If you have 2400 watts going in, you can split that up into any which voltage amperage that you want, but you can never exceed that. So like in this case, this 30 volt 80 amp welder would be pretty functional for most things, but could you get 35 volts? Yes, you could. You'd have to drop the amperage output to like 70 volts. Well, that's almost useless for most stick rods. And you see the problem? That's why like a lot of industrial welders that run on 480 volts, they can run like 40, 50, 60 volts at 80, 90 amps because the starting voltage is so high that every winding ratio change, they're still, rather than stepping down from 120 volts, they're stepping down from 480. So they maintain super high voltage at very low amperages, which is a huge benefit. Uh, and that's why a lot of those big industrial stick welders, much like that dial arc, have a pretty decent voltage amperage curve for running rods, and modern inverters simply don't. Now, a modern inverter could manipulate the transformer uh, in order to boost voltage at lower amperage. It is possible, but again, like I said, and I hate to beat a dead horse, you cannot exceed the wattage on the input on the output. It's, it doesn't work like that. That breaks the laws of physics. So I know that was a lot to digest, and this was probably a topic better suited to a 20-minute discussion rather than a toolbox talk, but it is what it is, and I wanted to get you guys something interesting that you can talk about and learn from. So with that said, thanks for sticking around, guys. Until next time.